Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com, on Roku, in the sports section, one word, Dwyer Boxing News, on iTunes, one word, Dwyer Boxing News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Well, we now have a lot more clarity in the AFC, right? After this last weekend, we now know that there are very few teams that can win the AFC. Seeding is paramount. With two months to go, it's November the 4th, 2014. I believe if you're a serious gambler, you need to be obsessed right now with seeding. Which teams are going to get the one and two seeds so that they don't even have to risk losing in the first round of the playoffs, right? Because you get a bye. And so they can be at their best at home for that first playoff game. If they're the number one seed, it's even better than that. If they win their first playoff game, then they're at home for the AFC Championship game. Now, I believe it's obvious. I believe history tells us that it's very hard to beat Tom Brady and the New England Patriots in New England in the playoffs. Right? We know it's hard. Now, I know, as Baltimore Raven fans know, it has been done. But it's extremely difficult, right? Now, as I suspected, and to those of you who bought the pick at DwyerSportsBetting.com, I do not believe that the Denver Broncos, with an elite quarterback who's now older and who no longer has elite arm strength at this stage of his career and with a history of losing to Tom Brady in big games can do it. In other words, to me, last year's AFC Championship game turned on the fact that the game was in Denver and not New England. I believe even with a vastly improved defense, Denver showed us this last weekend that they would have problems. It would be a major uphill battle for them to go to New England and to beat New England in New England. Let me go one step further. Denver has other problems because, of course, Denver even now has played most of their games at home. Their record seems to have a home field advantage aspect to it that other teams don't have. What I want you to do is to research where Denver has been playing their games. Right? Understand, the NFL wants to sell tickets. They want to make money. They wanted to create games where Peyton Manning, who was closing in on Brett Favre's record, would be in a friendly environment. What that has done is that's left Denver in the second half to play most of their games on the road. Right? Food for thought. But let me get back to the concept of home field advantage. I don't believe Denver beats New England in New England in the playoffs if that game happens. Nor do I believe that the Cincinnati Bengals and Andy Dalton, who have a history of coming up short in the playoffs wherever the game is played, can do it. Right? We all saw last year what happened when Andrew Luck and the Indianapolis Colts tried to beat New England in New England in the playoffs. So understand, the challenge facing teams, and they're not that many, like the Denver Broncos and the Indianapolis Colts, for the rest of this season will be to deny the New England Patriots the top seed in the AFC. Now let's get a little advanced here. Let's talk playing style here just for a second. Personality type. There are two quarterbacks, in my opinion, who are wild cards. 
right? These guys have the ability in January to actually deliver wherever they are if they're on their A games. And that's Ben Roethlisberger with the Pittsburgh Steelers. And that's Joe Flacco with the Baltimore Ravens. But understand, as gamblers should know by now, Big Ben's defense is not all that. Right, Dick LeBeau is dealing with a young defensive group, and this is not a typical Steeler defense. Right, so I would say that the Steelers, even with a good record, will have problems in the playoffs on the road. Let's talk about the Baltimore Ravens. Right, few quarterbacks have Joe Flacco's record of success in the playoffs. Here's the problem. Right now, Baltimore, after losing some games of late, is at the bottom of their division. Right? Always pay attention to these wildcard type teams. These teams that can rise up. The teams, I believe, that can beat the paradigm. That would have the best chance of beating New England in New England in the playoffs would be Pittsburgh, it'd have to be a shootout, right, and Baltimore. But understand, the way the season has broken, neither of them leads their division right now. Cincinnati does. And that's a brutal division where the teams are going to beat up on each other, right? Baltimore can't afford too many more losses or they might miss the playoffs entirely, neutralizing them as a threat. Right, so just pay attention to those two teams. Now getting back to the agenda I have in this video. It's to highlight two weeks out what could be the biggest game of the year remaining on the calendar for seeding in the AFC. Understand in two weeks after both teams have their bye weeks, and that's crucial. Whatever aches and pains these teams have, they'll have a bye week to address them. This is almost like a Super Bowl. In two weeks, the New England Patriots travel to Indianapolis to play the, Col the Colts. Folks, it doesn't get bigger than this. Both of these teams lead their divisions. Both of these teams have a shot at the top seed in the AFC. Now what I want futures bettors to consider is the possibility that the Houston Texans might make a quarterback change after their bye week. Fitzpatrick hasn't set the world on fire. Right? Understand, too, that Houston, and they're relevant because they're in second place in Indy's division. Houston might realize that their top player, Arian Foster, is banged up. He had to leave the game this last week with a groin injury. And they might make a decision to make themselves better in the future, while, without saying so, backing away from this season. If Houston capitulates, then the Colts win that division. They're already in front as it is. Now, if the Colts, and understand, I have a bias here. I believe much more strongly in the Patriots than I do the Colts. Right? But the Colts are hosting the Patriots. If the Colts win that game two weeks from now, they have a discernible path to the top seed in the AFC. Let's talk about it. If they beat New England and go to 7-3, and three, understand that the game they play after that is against the Jacksonville Jaguars at home. Understand the game they play after that is against the Washington Redskins at home, right? 
They could easily be 10 and 3 at that stage. You know what happens at that moment. The team then becomes energized. It's a second win. They realize that they have a shot to be the top seed. The press around them in the locker rooms talking about that possibility. Right? The players understand. With weeks to go in the season. Right? That they have a shot at the top seed. Guys show up. If the Colts win their next three games, they'd be 9-3. and three. Then they would go to Cleveland to play the Cleveland Browns. Cleveland has had some offensive challenges. Cleveland has some tough games between now and then. Cleveland could well be out of it by the time that game happens. That's a winnable game. Then the Colts return home to play the Houston Texans, who by that point might have a few more losses. Then they end the season with two games on the road, both of which I consider to be winnable. Just how strong is the home field advantage for the Dallas Cowboys? They've been losing games at home, folks. They just lost two of them. Lost to the Redskins, and they lost to the Cardinals. Tony Romo has broken bones in his back. As it is, Tony Romo isn't the best quarterback in December. Right? I believe Indy's viable against Dallas in the next to last week of the season at Dallas. And then their last game would be against the Tennessee Titans. So understand, and I know Bill Belichick and Tom Brady know this well. That game in two weeks has major implications. Major. If the Patriots win that game, after having beaten Denver and Indy, they'd clearly have the upper hand in terms of getting the home field advantage. Right? If Indy wins that game, they might have the upper hand in terms of getting the home field advantage and it's paramount for them especially because Andrew Luck in playoff games throws picks and I don't believe Indy would have a shot against the Patriots in New England so what does this all mean for serious gamblers it means right now I believe you want to grab a couple of futures bets Right? I believe Vegas has this wrong. They think the team most likely to win the Super Bowl are the Denver Broncos, and they're giving you a plus 275. We know based on scheduling that the team that might have the best path to get that home field in the AFC might be the New England Patriots. They're at a plus 600. Understand, I took the Patriots months ago as I recommended in a video and got much higher odds than that. But the plus 600 is ridiculous because New England's already by Denver. New England's already shown it can beat Denver in New England. Right? Just look at history. Tom Brady is absolutely dominant in New England. He doesn't lose that much at home. He simply doesn't. You're getting better than twice the odds you would get taking the Denver Broncos. And keep in mind, the Broncos play a lot of road games the second half. I would argue the Broncos are even in the more problematical division. Right? Because KC's lurking out there. Guys like Jamal Charles, hey, they're tough opponents. Well, understand, as you sprinkle some funds on New England at plus 600 to win the Super Bowl, understand you can get double those odds. 
It's breathtaking, folks. You can get a plus 1,200 right now on the Indianapolis Colts. Now, you saw Andrew Luck yesterday against the New York Giants. If Andrew Luck, after a week's rest, after a bye week, can somehow knock off the Patriots in two weeks, given this schedule against teams like Jacksonville and Tennessee, with a Houston team whose best player is injured, a Houston team that might be making a quarterback change. Right? Keep in mind, they traded for Ryan Mallett for a reason. Then don't you think this 12 to 1 is just a bit generous? Andrew Luck has had problems in the playoffs, but he did beat KC last year at home after a terrible first half, didn't he? <coughs> Understand the way these futures bets work. All you're doing is staking out a position. You can hedge against it later. All you're trying to do is to get the cheap leverage that the casino is giving you. Understand, it looks to me like Indy's almost certain to win their division. If Indy makes the playoffs, let's say they're the two seed, not even the one seed. And I've gotten 12 to 1 odds on them. Just understand, I'm not at risk of losing anything the first week of the playoffs because Indy wouldn't be playing. Then the second week of the playoffs, I'd have Indy at home. Even if I didn't believe in Indy, since I've gotten 12 to 1 leverage on the Indy side of the play, I could take the team they're playing. Right? And net a profit regardless of who wins the game. Right, so take a hard look at the futures props. Take a hard look at the schedules for the Patriots and for the Indianapolis Colts. Keep in mind, we're just talking about the AFC. Why? Because you have more clarity in the AFC. Let's face it, that NFC is a mess. How healthy is Tony Romo? How well will Mark Sanchez do? Aaron Rodgers is great. Can you say the same thing about the Packer defense? Who here watching this video really trusts the Detroit Lions? Right? The New Orleans Saints, their record looks pedestrian. Wow, that team looks dangerous. What happens if they take out San Francisco this weekend and end San Francisco's season. How much do you trust the Arizona Cardinals? Right? Aren't you a little bit thrown by how pedestrian the Seattle Seahawks offense has looked? Weren't you a little bit surprised to hear that Marshawn Lynch hadn't scored a touchdown in weeks before this last game? Aren't you a bit perturbed by the idiots in that Seattle Seahawks locker room who are wondering whether their quarterback, the one that won a Super Bowl for them last year in his second season, is black enough. Right? So, the NFC is smoky. The AFC is not. It's the usual suspects. Tom Brady. Peyton Manning. Andrew Luck all of whom made the playoffs last year, right? All of them, right? Andy Dalton, another one. Then you got a couple of wild cards, right? Joe Flacco, who has a Super Bowl ring. Ben Roethlisberger, who has multiple, right? Let's face it. Phillip Rivers, the Chargers, their rushing attack might be too depleted for them to continue to be taken seriously. What happened in that game against Miami anyway? Well, I believe the AFC is giving you more visibility. I believe it doesn't take a rocket scientist to realize that the Indianapolis Colts right now are getting longer odds than teams like the Packers and the Cardinals. Right? I believe it's clear that the Colts offer value especially when 
They're hosting the Patriots in two weeks. And they already have the upper hand in their division and their schedule after that Patriot game is very manageable and has them playing teams like RG3 and the Redskins in Indy. Give it a look. Let me know what you think. If you feel I'm overlooking a team, if you feel there's some team out there that we should all know about, right? If you feel there's a pathway to the playoffs and to a decent seating, right? Based on a team's remaining schedule, I hope you share it with all of us here in the comment section to this video to help give all of us gamblers a leg up on the casino. Thanks for stopping by. And I hope you visit us at DwyerSportsBetting.com.